Alright, I hope you all had a good lunch and we would like to welcome you to our next talk, uh, Component-Based Design System and Development. Uh, oh, here's a okay. So let me introduce David. Uh, David is a software engineer at Red Hat. Uh, we're both based in Brno, the Czech Republic, and he works on ManageIQ, mostly in Ruby. Uh, he used to be maintainer of Petterfly, which is our design system. Uh, yesterday, I think he got back from Minsk, Belarus, where he was speaking at RubyConf. Uh, so today he's in Sweden. We'll be back in the Czech Republic soon as well. Uh, he loves JavaScript, uh, but he's really good at playing guitar and ukulele. So, here is Teresa in life. There we have a picture. Uh, she's an interactional des interaction designer at Red Hat uh, and she oversees the design of the things I'm working on from the engineering side, so Manage IQ and also other projects like Foreman or Insights. Uh, she lived seven years in North Carolina. She got there with an athletic scholarship as a runner. She even has a Wikipedia page, check her out. Uh, she loves working with us. Uh, engineers, and she's trying to bring the human uh, perspective to the technology we do. So we both work at Red Hat, which is all about open source. Um, based in Brno, I've mentioned that from the Czech Republic. And... Yeah, this is our largest engineering facility in, in Europe. And as you know, Red Hat had a lot of products, over 40 different ones. Uh, some of them have user interfaces, some of them not. We are not going to talk about the ones which don't have user interfaces, because I think you know why. And when you have 40 different products, it's a challenge, because they all look different. They come from uh, different parts of the world. They were different by, developed by different people. How do we make them look similar when they belong to Red Hat? Uh, what we're looking at is a few screenshots of uh, when we were starting uh, several products. Um, they don't look similar. Probably the only similar thing could be the Red Hat logo. Not even the buttons are the same. And it was a challenge not only from the consistency, but it was hard to use when people purchase Red Hat products or use Red Hat products. They're used to a certain kind of the behavior, and this was confusing. This all started back in history, 2013, uh, when the UXD team, UXD stands for User Experience Design, had only five people. And their goal was to make the look and feel of Red Hat products more consistent, to create a system that could help all. Uh, the overall user experience was a chaos. Uh, open source projects were known for its not the greatest user experience, and the interfaces felt disconnected as a whole. So the team started working on a solution. Uh, the solution that can be shared with designers and engineers in an open source way. Uh, some developers, front end developers, they didn't want to think about front end. Uh, but when we had some guidelines, they could find a way how to make it more user friendly. They, it was helpful for them, so they cared. There was a need for a design system. Different products will, were built over and over again. Uh, the patterns were not consistent. And it took a lot for designers and engineers to agree. So here's an example. You're looking at a modal, a basic modal. You have buttons at the bottom. Uh, they are on the left. Are they supposed to be on the left? Or are they supposed to be on the right? But do we need some guidelines, or should we even flip them? And things like that, people argued, argued what's right, what's not. Then it was misleading when in some products it was different locations uh, and back and forth. So we needed 
some guidelines to unify our design system. Uh, why do we need an entire system for this? Uh, we wanted to improve consistency, uh, increase usability, uh, reduce time, uh, cost to market, but also share the best practices with the community. What is the design system? Do we know what design system is? Few people. Uh, so design system is a, these are guidelines, rules, constraints, and principles implemented in design and code. Um, some of you, many of you have seen or heard or used material design by Google. Uh, Salesforce, Salesforce has its own lightning design system as well. And both companies, Google and Salesforce, have a pretty wide variety of portfolio, and it's nearly impossible to maintain consistency without a system. So design system acts as a connective tissue that brings the portfolio together. So I'm also here, not just smiling. Uh, I would like to talk about, after the competition analysis, about our design system. We call it Patternfly. Uh, similar to other Red Hat projects, uh, it has a community around itself, uh, but unlike others, it focuses more on designers. Under the hood, it's a custom bootstrap, it was a custom bootstrap styling with some jQuery components. Uh, like date picker, time picker, tree view, and all the stuff that uh, Bootstrap doesn't provide. It was a little more enterprise looking, but the problem is with this is there's a lot of external JavaScript dependencies. So the first success when we're starting about 2013 came at Red Hat Summit. Uh, we're looking at the old screens. When we applied our pattern fly design systems to all of them, it improved. You can see there is a general layout, there are colors. Uh, it, we could tell even from this, these few screenshots, these products belong to one family. So the team succeeded. Yeah, but then uh, in the front-end world, there was a drastic change in the JavaScript world. A lot of libraries appeared that, uh, and still appear in every month, and they changed the way how we think about front-end, uh, all the fundamentals of front-end development. I'm speaking about Angular, React, and all the others, you probably know them. Problem what, uh, was that uh, our engineers started loving and using them, and we didn't have support for it because we were running old jQuery things. Uh, so our designers, uh, our engineers just ignored Patternfly and started implementing their own components in Angular, React, or any other cool framework. So basically this happened. And this led to inconsistencies because everyone implemented their components in their own uh, framework. Uh, it caused fragmentation across the products again. So as a Band-Aid solution, we started to implement pattern fly widgets in these libraries, like Angular, React, Angular 2. Uh, so we started to implement the same components. The problem with this, if you look at this, uh, those community graphs of those repos, you can see that some of them are more developed than the others, which means that some of those libraries contain more components. And you could end up with a setup where you need more than one library just to have the right set of components for your product. So we learned what, that we need a universal solution, which is a little megalomaniac, right? So as you can see here, usually finding a universal solution that helps everyone in the world is not possible. Uh, we just wanted something suboptimal that would help our things. So we came up with components, components, and components. We realized that we cannot swim against the current, uh, but by splitting up pattern fly into smaller pieces, it can be easier to react, pun intended, to changes. So our plan was this. We wanted to remove uh, all JavaScript from the core repo, have just a pure CSS library with all the look and feel. 
split up pattern fly into atomic, very small components that behave like a mini repository. So that our uh, people can just uh, include the libraries they want and they need to use. We chose one framework to implement all of it. And we made a layer that allows it to coexist with the old technologies. So you can include Angular stuff into a React component and vice versa for easier transition. And about Bootstrap, after the custom styling, we no longer need it. Also, it's not very enterprise looking and we didn't want it to have the jQuery dependency at all and uh, the dependency on third party libraries. So basically this happened. We made our own Bootstrap. And woohoo! So meet Patternfly next. That's the fourth version of Patternfly. Uh, it has all the things I described without Bootstrap, without jQuery. It has isolated components. It's open source. Uh, you can check it out. You can try it in the beta version. And the development model now looks like this. So there is a thin layer of uh, CSS styling grid and grid system, which is developed fully by the UX team. Uh, there are some atomic components like buttons and uh, drop downs and all those little pieces that you can Lego together to build something bigger, also developed by UXD because they are so shared across pro uh, products. Then the UXD team and the engineering is working together to make more complicated components by putting together those atomic components. And the engineering is using those components on the higher level in their own products. So this is how we collaborate. It's fun to work with each other. Uh, I'm going to talk, mention uh, more about Patternfly. Um, our goal is to apply Patternfly to all of our products. Uh, and it means understanding the Patternfly uh, patterns, but also how they should be applied. Uh, Consistency is important. Consistency is one of the most powerful usability principles. When things always behave the same, users don't have to worry about what will happen. Uh, and if we are using the components over and over again, we can eliminate the confusion and make it easier for the user. Uh, so we can end up having a consistent behavior and patterns uh, and build the application more quick, quicker. Uh, so what we are looking at is a basic component. Uh, this component is reusable. When we have many of them, we have a lot of components that can be assembled together, and we can build with them. Go back. We're still building with the component. Uh, one component doesn't build a product. But when we have many of them and we take care of them, we can build a castle. And we can even build more castles with the same component. And the users or the people who live in the castle or who use the castle are going to know that we can have four of them. They will know that there is a behavior where we kind of kitchen, but also that we can find a horse table, and it's going to be the same way, the same behavior. And that's what consistency means for the user. Uh, so UXD started, our team started with five brave people in 2013. Uh, there was a need for more people uh, to work on our product, and we grew exponentially. It, right now, it's about 100 of us. Uh, and we are working together with engineering teams to create and build successful products. And it's fun to work with each other. Uh, we enjoy bringing ideas to life, and we embrace the collaboration between designers and engineers. Um, there can be a designer who m designs the greatest thing in the universe, but if it's not consulting with an engineer in terms of technical limitations, uh, we're not moving fast. And we're always looking for that balance. About it. It's about teamwork, it's about collaboration. Uh, to sum it up, 
uh, it's about continuous involvement, uh, involvement, about communication between designers and engineers and adjusting the right solution. This thing we presented to you is not a final product. It's a continuously evolving strategy where we can react, again pun intended, to the changes in the front-end world. Taxonic. So, any questions in the audience? If you don't have questions, we do. You already have microphones. <laughs> I see three questions. Let's start here. Uh, so, is this only about uh, web-based components, or does it also apply for the desktop or desktop-based applications? or even mobile applications? Well, uh, components now with React Native and, I don't know, Angular has something similar, and Electron and all the things from the web actually appearing in the desktop and the mobile applications. I think this can be universal. But in Petronfly, we support only web-based interfaces, yes. So where were the other two questions? Here's one. <clears throat> you mentioned that the design system is open source and community based. Uh, so how easy is it for, uh, let's say, a company to adapt to the design system and use it for their own? Uh, so we have a pool of variables that are customizable. If you mean this part, that how you, how you will tailor it for a, for a company. Yeah. So yeah. We, have, we have one version is what, what is for the community part, and we have a set of CSS or SAS libraries for our own things with our own assets. And that's how we compile it separately. Great. You can write your own and use it with Patternfly, no problem. Uh, yeah, so I was just curious, like the applications that you have that are based on Bootstrap and kind of the older versions, uh, how are you moving them into using this new system? Like, are you actually changing those into React, or do you have some way of applying that to? Like, do you have some kind of, you know, using the CSS with Bootstrap-based projects or... Yes, like so we are trying to get rid of Bootstrap. So all the pieces are like puzzles. So you can take out the piece of the puzzle and put the new component uh, in the new place. Uh, we try to make it so compatible that it would work. So we're building the CSS variables and then building, moving that into the actual React components. So and you can load the old library and the new library into the same code base at the same time. They are compatible. But it still has the same look and feel. Yep. Any more hands? All right, I'll ask a question. Is anyone here who uses a living design system? Can you share more? Do you have questions? Would you like to use Patternfly? <laughs> Well, can you say well, at SUSE we have something similar? So, but I, I don't know. I mean, I'm not in the design team. I'm in the, the coding team, so I just know know about it. And we've used it for one project in particular that I'm working on that we moved from. You know, it was it has its own had its own style. It was a Rails on uh, Ruby on Rails app, and we moved to using that kind of common framework. Uh, but it's still we're still using Bootstrap. And so it's kind of, yeah, we're, we're looking at it and taking the CSS and copying, but we don't have any way of like systematically moving components over uh, to the new design system. So that's why I'm curious if you had some, some experience in that. The experience in moving from Bootstrap to components? Yeah, so uh, Bootstrap was painful at the end for us. I mean, from the documentation side, it's awesome that you have huge community and forums and everything. But anytime you want to build something custom, you uh, bump into obstacles. So it was a trade-off made by uh, the UX engineers that we should drop it. And our components are trying to be as much compatible as possible with the old world. I think she has more questions. Prepared. <laughs> uh, 
You should always bring your own questions to Scandinavia. We're shy by nature. <laughs> <laughs> um, any more questions? I think we're all set, I would say. Thank you. Thank you all.